Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. We have a brand new first look at the Venom 3 movie, so we'll break it all down. They've started filming, and obviously there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in the Spider-Man universe of movies. The Sony spinoff movies they're doing in the Venom universe, as well as Tom Holland's Spider-Man in the MCU with Spider-Man 4 in the new trilogy that he's working on. And they also just had that live-action crossover scene with Venom in Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. What do you want? I'm robbing you because I'm a bad guy. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We just got the Craven the Hunter trailer. I did a video for that, so I'll link it at the end of this. But we're starting to see the movies reference Spider-Man more and more. I think like the best example is still the Morbius trailers. Even though they cut a lot of that out of the movie, there was so much Spider-Man in that movie. You could just feel Kevin Feige telling them behind the scenes, please take all that Spider-Man out. We don't want to ruin Spider-Man No Way Home. It's doing so well at the box office. But during the footage, you see them filming a new Venom 3 scene with Eddie in Los Mateos, Spain. What might be going on here is they might just be filming in Spain and it might be doubling for Mexico and he's still in Mexico after the events of the last movie. During the movie, he's meant to be on the run since the end of Venom Let There Be Carnage in the Spider-Man No Way Home post credit scene. So at the end of Venom Let There Be Carnage, he fled the United States to Mexico. That's where the hotel room, the scene on the beach were supposed to be. And then he was transported to the MCU Universe version of the hotel room by Doctor Strange's first spell. During the Spider-Man No Way Home post credit scene, he just walked from that room with the very surprised random dude to the hotel bar getting super drunk, talking to Cristo Fernandez, the bartender, about everything that had happened in the MCU up to that point. Like they recapped the events of the MCU you through Avengers Infinity War, Avengers Endgame with Thanos the Snap, even Tom Holland's Spider-Man. Most people remember him as Danny Rojas from Ted Lasso. The fact that they were talking about Spider-Man is a little bit funny because obviously it's Venom, so they want Venom to be thinking about Spider-Man like he was on his way to New York City to talk to Spider-Man as if they were going to face each other before Doctor Strange's second spell transported him back to his Venom universe. Right now, the rumor about the plot is that the real main villain of the movie is actually going to be a version of the Xenophage, which is a race of cultures in the Marvel comics that feed off the symbiotes, like natural predators to the symbiotes. And for the most part, the only real natural predator to the symbiotes is actually Null, god of symbiotes. They're meant to be apex predators, so someone that could actually take them down is meant to be really, really powerful. There have been a couple deleted scenes and a couple references to Null, but obviously Null isn't going to be a big character during Venom 3. He'd be like an endgame Thanos level threat for the Venom characters. They wouldn't go straight to that in a trilogy. You save that for like some giant huge universe crossover. The report right now is that during the movie, the Xenophage won't be from another planet like the symbiotes as it is in the comics. It'll be the result of the government's genetic experimentation on the symbiotes in the previous movies to create their own anti-venom type of symbiote weapon. But it won't literally be Anti-Venom from the comics, which is like a totally different character. Anti-Venom was created when Eddie Brock had separated from the Venom symbiote briefly. It left traces of the symbiote in his body. He developed cancer and then went to one of Martin Lee's feast shelters for help, which they featured during the Spider-Man games. They even featured Aunt May's feast shelters during Spider-Man No Way Home briefly. While Eddie Brock was there, Martin Lee used his Mr. Negative powers to cure Eddie's cancer, but the process also caused the symbiote traces in his body to change and bond with his white blood cells, creating a new hybrid anti-venom symbiote. It manifested fully for the first time when the regular venom symbiote tried to bond with his body again. All of its powers, as you'd expect, were mostly healing-based, in addition to regular enhanced attributes that all symbiotes give people. It can cure any disease, any impurity in his body or other people's bodies, and it's completely mindless, unlike the regular symbiotes, so when Eddie Brock is wearing the anti-venom symbiote, he's fully in control. They might eventually have some Easter eggs for anti-venom in the Venom movies, but I don't think they have any plans to completely separate Eddie Brock permanently or semi-permanently from the Venom symbiote. They've already done the symbiote body swapping trick a couple times in the movies, like with Anne Wang, Lady Venom. There are also rumors that Patrick Mulligan will return as a version of Toxin, as a lot of people assumed after Venom let them be carnage because of the ending with his character. Monsters. He got in the Toxin symbiote as a result of their final fight. Reportedly, that character will go on to become another anti-hero symbiote like Toxin does in the comics, and he and Venom will have to team up to stop Xenophage, who will be the true villain of the movie. And after that, Toxin will just go on to continue being an anti-hero in the universe on his own, which is pretty much how things go in the comics. 
But Toxin's history is that he's a relatively new character. He wasn't introduced till 2004 during a Venom vs. Carnage storyline. So Circle of Life, the Carnage symbiote realizes that it had been pregnant and was about to spawn another symbiote. But it hated the idea of Toxin before it was ever born because it was his prophecy that the thousandth iteration of their lineage, the Toxin symbiote, would become way more powerful than any of them before. So Carnage hates the idea of Toxin even more than it hates Venom. What a happy family, because you have to remember that Venom is kind of like Toxin's grandfather. It made a plan to kill Toxin as soon as it spawned it, so it's like killing your child right after it's born. But the spawning process left him so weak that he couldn't do anything about it. But because Patrick Mulligan just happens to be nearby, it puts the Toxin symbiote into him as sort of a temporary holding vessel, saying that he'll come back when he regains his strength to kill both of them. So Carnage didn't give Mulligan the Toxin symbiote because he cared about him or he trusted him. He was using him more like a tool, like a plaything. Then when Carnage does become strong enough, a bunch of other characters stop him from killing Toxin. Venom actually stops him, hoping that he can train Toxin to fight Spider-Man and Carnage. He's also responsible for naming the new symbiote Toxin. He calls him Toxin because his symbiote smells poisonous to the other symbiotes but he has all their abilities just turned up to 11. So he can do all the same things that Carnage can do, that Venom can do, but just more. Later, it's revealed that Mulligan has a strong enough personality and sense of morality to show Carnage mercy when they fight. So Venom and Carnage then realize that it's possible Toxin could eventually turn good and team up with Spider-Man against them, which obviously they don't want. So then Venom and Carnage try to team up to kill Toxin. Like I said, those three symbiotes relationship is very complicated. Eventually, Peter Parker Spider-Man does help Toxin during the fight, realizing what's going on, and then gives Mulligan the same version of the Uncle Ben speech. With great power comes great responsibility. And Mulligan walks away, spending his early days as Toxin, trying to teach the symbiote how to be good. It's a little bit what you saw at the end of the first Venom movie, with Eddie trying to teach the Venom symbiote how to be good. Sony also has several other Spider-Man spin-off movies that they're either finished filming, or they're in the middle of filming, or they plan on filming. All of them are meant to take place inside the same Venom universe. But the real crossover movie that they're building up to, at least right now in the background, is still supposed to be the Sinister Six movie with Michael Keaton's a Vulture, and they continue introducing more of the core Sinister Six villain characters in the universe. I just did a Kraven the Hunter trailer video. The Kraven movie is one example of that, but the difference a lot of people have been asking about since that Kraven trailer came out is that most of those villains are being introduced as anti-heroes. Like they want to make Venom seem like a good character. They want to make Kraven seem like more of a good character. So it sounds like there's going to be some kind of twist on their character where the Sinister Six come together, but not all of them really want to kill Spider-Man the same way. And supposedly Sony is trying to set up their Sinister Six movie with them facing Tom Holland's Spider-Man because everybody's been wondering who is the Spider-Man that they keep referencing in all these movies. But supposedly the Sinister Six movie wouldn't be part of the new Tom Holland Spider-Man 4 MCU trilogy. It wouldn't be one of those sequels. It would be like Sony doing their own thing with the Sinister Six movie, borrowing Tom Holland inside the Venom universe, and then he'd go back to his MCU Spider-Man solo trilogy. Based on the timing for when all these movies are currently being released, Sony is probably going to try and do that Sinister Six movie before Tom Holland's Spider-Man 6. I believe Marvel is going to try and finish that by 2029 or 2030, depending on how many delays there wind up being between now and then. It's still a long time. And for those of you that want to see Andrew Garfield come back as Amazing Spider-Man, reportedly Sony also tried to get him to come back as his Spider-Man for the Sinister Six movie instead of doing Tom Holland's Spider-Man, but he turned them down at the time. That could always change. Separately, Sony also does have plans to introduce their own new Spider-Man inside the Venom universe so that they can use the character more regularly and Tom Holland doesn't have to do a billion movies because he's not going to do that and they can't force him to do that. Supposedly, the plan originally was for them to actually say that the Venom universe really was Andrew Garfield's Amazing Spider-Man universe. I've talked about this in previous videos because there were so many Easter eggs that pointed to that like they really wanted it to be Andrew Garfield's universe. And they were planning on having his character retire, so to speak, so that the other new Spider-Man that they introduced could take over day to day. They also separately just confirmed that they're doing a live-action Miles Morales movie soon. They also had that big crossover in Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, so they've already canonized the version of this Miles Morales to the larger Venom universe. They could always wind up using the same Miles Morales twist as they do in his animated Spider-Verse movies and just not kill off Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker. They could just say that live-action Miles Morales just comes from Andrew Garfield's universe and becomes the day-to-day -day active Spider-Man. 
That way, Andrew Garfield can come back and cameo as Spider-Man every once in a while because they're all supposed to come back like Tobey Maguire. Pretty much all the Fox characters are coming back at some point during Avengers 6 Secret Wars. Let me know in the comments, though, if Sony does wind up introducing a brand new version of Spider-Man for their movies, which version of Spider-Man do you want it to be? And who do you want to be that character? Secret Invasion episodes have started. My full Secret Invasion episode 2 video will post Wednesday, just like normal. Be sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss that. They also just released a Five Nights at Freddy's trailer. I might do a video for that. Links for my Craven the Hunter trailer video down in the description below. You can click here for my new Secret Invasion episode 2 video. I'll update the link as soon as I post that. And click here to learn about Ben Affleck coming back as his Daredevil in Deadpool 3. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.